What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here back at the Understanding Bitcoin Conference in Malta. Uh, and today I'm joined here uh, by... Uh, John, what's your, what's your real last name? Again? John Carvalho. Carvalho. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, what are you up to? Uh, how do you like the conference so far? Uh, it's been really great. Um, this is actually the first time that I've been on stage at an official Bitcoin conference. I've been at other types of conferences before, and also the first time I've done my own solo presentation. But overall, everybody has been really great, having a lot of great conversations, meeting with people. The content has been much higher uh, quality than a lot of crypto conferences I've been to. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's kind of a shame that the ICO pitches uh, this time were not so good. Uh, I mean, we had like the Lightning ICO, we had sidechain ICOs and all that. I mean, it was cool and all, but it was kind of missing stake on the blockchain, stuff like that. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, not a lot of opportunity to speculate on, on the ICOs here. But um, no, I mean... We, we can joke, but the truth is, is that we're doing these technologies and we're Bitcoiners because we're not scamming and, you know, we're not interested in just finding ways to get uh, to get rich without doing any work. We're trying to find ways to make Bitcoin better, you know. Oh, yeah, exactly. And uh, that's also here really cool to have this conference with more, a lot of the developers uh, really telling us uh, what they're working on uh, and how we can use their products. So we had a lot of demos. Uh, the workshop's going to be there tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about the application uh, of, of what we know here in theory. Uh, so, so that is definitely awesome. Um, and you are uh, working with uh, BitRefill. Uh, so what's your, what's your job there and how do you like it? Yep, I started with BitRefill about... Um three or four months ago, and I am the chief communications officer, uh, basically just handling a lot of marketing-related marketing, marketing related things, visual-related things to the company. Um, but, you know, we're a small company, so we're all mixing a lot of tasks. Um, I do love the job. It has been really great to find a, a place where I can finally uh, express my Bitcoin in, inside of a company and get paid to do it. Um, and we happen to be, you know, at the, at the point in the company where we're finally uh, not just offering products, but we're also offering infrastructure services related to Bitcoin with our, our new line of products related to Lightning Network. Yeah, that is definitely awesome. And so a bit refill for all of you that don't know is uh, it's a service where you can buy gift cards and all other things uh, with Bitcoin. And that is definitely awesome for someone uh, like me who, who's living on Bitcoin, right? Because, uh, well, sometimes it's tough to get uh, the things that you want with Bitcoin. Uh, and so, for, of course, then gift cards are a nice opportunity, right? You can exchange magic internet money uh, for an IOU at a specific company. Uh, of course, gift cards are not as liquid as Bitcoin, as money should be. Uh, so you can hold your wealth in the sound liquid money, uh, but then you can spend it uh, with these services. So um, what, what are the products that you're providing here at BitRefill and what is the customer feedback so far? Um, basically, you know, the, the company uh, slogan right now is live on crypto. And so we're trying to be at least one part of the circle of a circular economy, allowing people to not have to directly sell their Bitcoin um, to be able to convert into goods and services. So the, 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 we're kind of in three product lines at the moment um, where we have gift cards, digital gift vouchers, and we, we were adding hundreds of them lately, um, including very big uh, companies like Airbnb and Netflix and things that people use every day. We have we're doing Amazon gift cards, et cetera. Um, and then in, we have the phone refills, which allows people to top up their phones, prepaid phones, et cetera. And these are things that are really popular. And in the context here, you have to keep in mind is we're doing this internationally. We have roughly 170 countries where we support products in, in, to varying degrees. And so certain products are really popular in certain areas and certain other products, those same products are totally not interested in other areas so it's very interesting to see how people use our products and how pe what type of bitcoiners are really out there in different countries in the world and then as i mentioned our, our third line is now offering what we're calling lightning networking services um, basically finding ways to act as a central company um, but still provide uh, relatively or if not totally trustless services through our efficiencies because of how lightning works um, Feedback has been pretty good. Um, you know, we get a lot of requests to add certain products. We get a lot of um, people thanking us for enabling certain things that they weren't able to do before, um, especially in some of the smaller countries. We get, you know, if you check out our, our Twitter account, just sometimes there are some stories people tell when it's like, oh, wow, that's nice. So, like, we didn't even know that we were helping people in this way. And, then, and so it's very interesting to see how people uh, actually can utilize our product in their everyday lives to live, live on crypto, basically. 
Uh, exactly. And again, like living on crypto is, of course, a dream. And, and we want to close the loop, right? Uh, when you get your income in Bitcoin and you have your expenditures in Bitcoin, you're fully in the second realm, right? You're, you're no longer in fiat la la land and you've escaped to a sound monetary system. Uh, and that is, that is quite powerful, right? Because is, it unmesses your head, right? After 100 years of fiat currency, it, it completely messed us up. Uh, so did you already experience like the, the mind shift of, of your clients now that they can be much more based on a sound money? Um, sort of. I, I will say, you know, there's still some issues with, the, there are different reasons why people use crypto uh, and why people buy, have bought Bitcoin. Um, some, a lot of times it's speculation. You know, currently we have a, a large amount of people that earn Bitcoin because of speculation. And so they see uh, BitRefill as a place to where they can, instead of selling their Bitcoin, maybe they can just buy something directly. But there are people that are, are using Bitcoin because they have to. And there are people that are buying gift cards from us because we're a much more actual practical way for them to do it um, than, than if they were using their local money or their local banking system. Um, so I would say one aspect that is a little uh, tricky is volatility. There are some people that need the qualities of Bitcoin that aren't necessarily uh, wanting to be exposed to the volatility. So that's I think we also help those people as well, though, because we give them a way to convert their Bitcoin into uh, a stable value, good or service. Um, so we're not we're not able to let them sell their Bitcoin, but we are an opportunity for them to be an off-ramp. Um, and so we're an alternative off-ramp to an exchange because, you know, you don't necessarily have to go through all of the banking infrastructure just to buy a gift card. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? And of course, you could speculate uh, if you buy it your Bitcoin with the fiat shitcoin, and then at the top, you will sell it for the fiat shitcoin. But then you're not really using Bitcoin as a money. You're using it as a speculative investment. Uh, Bitcoin is a money because you don't have to like barter for another monetary good, but because you can actually buy goods and services, consumption and production goods uh, with your currency. Uh, and in, in that sense, then when you buy these gift cards, you use Bitcoin like of course, you, you do speculate on the price, but on an on a economical sense, you actually use it as a currency, as a medium of exchange, uh, almost directly for the goods and services, of, co of course, with the extra step uh, of, of having these gift cards. Um, so do you think that this, this extra step of like from the Bitcoin to the gift card, then to the product, um, do you think that there's like some, some efficiency issues here? It depends on what your perspective is. Like, for example, I could sit here and I could tell you gift cards are way better shit coins than shit coins are. You know, um, they actually have utility. You can actually get real things that you can use with them, real services, real products. What can you do with a shit coin except, you know, get a higher degree of risk profile? Um, and that, that's not what a gift card is. So uh, that's one way to look at it. I can make them look re like really good. Um, to make it look really bad, I don't know. I mean, yeah dollars have more utility than gift cards. So, you know, you can use a dollar in a lot more ways, but we, we, we try every day to make that less true because we try to offer as many gift card options as possible um, and provide as much utility to the people looking to live on crypto as they can. So um, will we ever match the utility of a dollar? No, um, but we don't have to. We just, we just have to give people this unique uh, route to, as an off-ramp and, and hope that that's enough utility for them for us to be a profitable business. And so far, it's working okay. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so you said that, that you're always adding new gift cards. What, what's the process here? And especially when, when I'm a user and I want to have a specific gift card, uh, what could I do to let you know that this will be a nice service to offer? Um, sure. Uh, uh, from, from the second part of your question, I would say we listen to every single request we get. You know, we just if you, even if you respond to one of our tweets and say when this or when that, you know, we have we have a channel in Slack where we report every single time somebody asks for something. We have a business development team that that puts that into a task and prioritizes it as to when they'll address it and when they'll look into that card. And we have an archive of all the cards we have already looked into and what the problem was with why we didn't get it. So we have a whole system for managing when we're adding cards, how we're adding cards, what we're adding cards, and how we prioritize it. So. Um, we definitely take that very seriously and we're very aggressive about adding products. As far as the actual process for them, it definitely varies because there are some things that people want us to add that those companies don't even have the concept of a voucher or a gift card or credit with their company. So like it, that would become, that would require us doing business development to a much deeper level to get them to add this functionality just for us. That is, is rare. 
Um, then the opposite end of the spectrum is there are some companies that this is what they provide as a service as a company. They collect connect collect uh, c- connections and business partnerships with get with end providers, and they have a whole library of cards that they offer. So then, the, and they each have a different kind of. Uh, way that you have to interact with these resellers to get cards. Sometimes we just have to buy the codes and 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 uh, provide them in a much more manual process and add them to a database ourselves. Like there's a, there's a lot of different ways that w- things we have to do to provide these cards. Sometimes we have to pay face value. Sometimes we have to pay over face value. Sometimes we get a good cut. Off, cut off of face value, but in the end, we we keep our margin pretty low, and so you'll see in relation to the actual face card of value, we stay as close as we can, and we don't just because we get something uh, under face value doesn't mean that we're going to still mark it up a lot. So we, we're very modest with our with our fees, and what we're trying to do is just make sure people always use us and stay with us, and don't have to worry about finding competitive places to go. Um, and, and I guess I'll, I'll make a plug for a future product that will a future service we're going to have eventually. Um, we want to have a reward program. This is a very frequent request and when people really want a way to like have uh, an incentive to be loyal and get, and get rewarded for their loyalty. And we definitely, we're definitely working on that. Oh yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. The reward program that that does sound interesting because uh, not only do you incentivize customers to for currently coming back, uh, you also like have help them out with uh, stacking sats, right? With with receiving maybe a couple satoshis uh, either directly or as a well bit refill voucher or gift card. Um, So so that's definitely awesome. Yeah. Um, So when you do buy these uh, gift cards or or vouchers, do you as bit refill buy them in bulk? And then you have them on your own asset balance sheet and then you sell them one by one? Or does do you only buy them as soon as the user requests to have that? This depends on how we acquire them. Um, it, it, like I told you a little bit about the spectrum of ways to acquire them. Well, that spectrum will include like the, the, if we're acquiring them from provis- professional providers, some may have APIs where we can do things in an automated fashion. If we're, if we're acquiring them directly from a company, we may have to pre-buy them. Um, if we're, they're, they're all flavors of, of arrangements. And so our accounting team is definitely ha- has a lot of work keeping things organized, keeping things flowing. Um, you will see once in a while we do run out of stock on a card. There's not a constant flow. It is constant management to keep these cards available. Okay, yeah, really cool. And of course, that's liquidity allocation, right? If you have like 100,000 euros or dollars worth of Amazon gift cards, but no one is buying them uh, and you've bought them in bulk, right? That's, of course, costs that you have to carry. Uh, uh, so I guess for the quote unquote normal uh, business model of such a thing, you would buy these cards with fiat and then you would sell them for fiat again. Right uh, to your customers, but of course you're a Bitcoin company, right? So uh, do the the businesses um, have an issue with you selling these gift cards for Bitcoin? And does that ever come up? No, in the end, the, the, our industry is not a money transfer industry. Our, our, our industry is, is selling basically products. They're just products in the form of, of credit with the company. And so this isn't a kind of aged industry. It, it predates Bitcoin. Um, so in, in the end, a lot of these providers simply see this as a payment method. Um, we have made, at times when we try to request cards from specific companies um, that don't have gift cards that aren't carried by gift card resellers, et cetera. Um, when we contact them directly, there are some that won't work with crypto that specifically aren't interested because it's crypto. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, I won't name it here. One, because I'm not, I'm not sp- sure if it's the specific one, but two, but just because I don't think it's a good idea. Um, but th- there are, we have a, a couple frequently requested things that we already know like we we're not going to get it because they just don't want their stuff touching crypto um i think it's it's fear-based and it's not really there isn't much uh actual cons- uh, risk they have to do it but for some reason they're just scared um and uh we actually have one that we tried in the past that didn't do it and yesterday they said yes so we will have a, we will have a new product um coming soon that has been frequently requested that finally newly um it wasn't available before but finally now it will be um they're not the hugest company in the world but it is something that was frequently requested so it'll be cool 
awesome. Always nice to, to add new, new products and new companies. Uh, so, but of course, these are IOUs, right? You, you pay up front and then you have a promise uh, to have the, the store credit, which then you can buy the goods and services with. And that is, of course, right there is a bankruptcy um, issue, right? Uh, so did that ever happen that a company promised these uh, IOUs, but then like exit scammed or just went bankrupt? I don't know. Um, I, I, my, my history isn't in the gift card industry. I'm going to guess in that sometime in the history of the gift card industry, there was probably a major provider that went bankrupt and everybody's gift cards became useless. Seems likely. I don't know. I don't have that story. Um, but yeah, it's true. It is something that, that people have to understand is these are not dollar substitutes. They're just, uh, they're just a way for you to buy, to pre-buy products and services. You know, um, there is a certain profile for you there, you know, in the contrast of uh, having Bitcoin and being exposed to Bitcoin volatility or needing an off ramp. But in the end, these, this isn't money, you know, you're not going to be able to get the same, uh, utility. You're not going to be able to get the same security. You're still going to have to count on that business being around when you want to redeem that card. Um, but in, in, in all honesty, most people aren't buying cards from high risk businesses, you know, like they're, they're buying cards from really large companies, you know, that have existed for a while and they're really in high demand. That's much more likely. And, and, and if you're buying a card from like a smaller company that's only been around for a little while, well, one, the odds are we aren't even listing it or making it available because there aren't enough people that use it yet. And, and then and two, you're probably spending that card right away or in the near term. So your risk is pretty low. Um, so it's not a real factor. I, I, I've never seen it happen um, within this company and I haven't heard any stories about it. So I think it's a rare occurrence, but it could happen. I mean, imagine if Amazon suddenly blew up one day, a lot of people would be pretty unhappy. Amazon has a lot, a lot of open credit with people um, from gift cards, uh, totally unrelated to BitRefill, just in general. Um, is is it a systemic risk? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Good points. Um, and so, as I said earlier, right? Usually, the the old system would be that the middleman here, Bitrefill, um, would uh, buy and sell both with fiat currencies, right? So, and if it's the same currency, then there's no foreign exchange risk, right? Because, but because you have your revenue uh, in Bitcoin and your expenditures in fiat, uh, you somehow have to manage that foreign exchange risk. Uh, how do you do that? Um, I don't have the specific details of it, how it's uh, how it's manages managed day to day, but just as a general uh, answer, I'll say we try to maximize our Bitcoin exposure, and we try. So we're trying to see how much Bitcoin we can hold at once, but we do have to manage our fiat exposure. So this becomes the accounting team's job to figure out on, on what kind of time frame into the future do we have to have fiat on hand to be able to uh, have the, the perfect amount of fiat versus Bitcoin balance. And I, I don't know the exact number, it may even vary, but just as an example, they may decide, okay, we want to make sure that we have enough fiat to cover two months of bills at all times, including payroll or blah, 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 blah. And so they make sure their fiat exposure is at that level at the current rate um, but we do have to touch a lot of fiat because a lot of the companies that we buy gift cards from don't take bitcoin so we and, and we have we're cycling product we're cycling inventory a lot i mean we're having we're having to uh, re re rebuy cards almost daily you know we're having to re-up balances with providers constantly it's it's a, it's a real task it's not easy yeah, it's, it's cash flow management right liquidity management absolutely um okay yeah um and then, then no further. So, okay, we, we've we've covered the uh, the first business model, right? Which which are these uh, these gift cards and vouchers? Uh, but you also mentioned uh, Lightning Network. So you were one of the first nodes uh, on Mainnet. Uh, one of my first peers actually was on Mainnet a bit a bit refill, and still to this day, uh, on my noddle, uh, the largest channel that I have is with Bit Refill because it's by far the one of the most con well connected nodes, and most of my routing goes through you because you are just so well connected. Um, so. <laughs> Why, why not 2x, right? Why not just, uh, why didn't you or support uh, the, the on-chain scaling, or not support, but I guess like the, the Bcash thingy, right? Um, but why were you so, uh, so excited about Lightning? And, and where do you see it now after roughly a year uh, of playing with it actively? Um, did your expectation get fulfilled? Okay, so a few things you said. Um, first, with uh, being uh, one of the first nodes and it being uh, well connected and you having a lot of liquidity there, I think that's a natural thing. I think it's because we're actually 
I, I'm pretty sure we're the largest economic lightning node. You know, like we're offering the most actual products and services people can buy and supporting lightning at the same time. So I think as a natural, um, you know, positioning with on the lightning network and being well connected, we're probably always going to be well connected because there are a lot of people that need to connect to us. So it's, we're always going to be a good source to connect to for routing because there are already other people actually one needing to connect to us for their own purposes. So, um, and, and we only want to make that stronger. We want to make sure that we're uh, providing a lot of utility to the Lightning Network in Bitcoin. Um, what was the second part of your, your question? Um, so, uh, of course, um, I, I guess because the, the gift cards are, are sometimes rather slow or low volumes, right? Um, On-chain might not be as feasible, right? Especially with, with high fees. So um, did you, like, just just on that side of the usability of here on-chain versus... Like oh, yeah, you're asking why, why, you know, why not just make the block size higher and... and what? Okay, so this goes into, you know, um, the block size debate, you know, we could get into it. It's a somewhat separate topic, but in general, I don't think that that scaling the block size is effective in any short form whatsoever. I think that people have to get used to the idea and reframe this to thinking of the Bitcoin blocks are always pretty much full. And the only reason they're not is because somebody isn't taking the time to like spam them yet. And, and, and it just means Bitcoin is still small, but at, at, at actual usage, at actual capacity, people will fill the blocks at any size. So you really do need a new technology. You need, you need, a, you need to have scaling that is exponential in some way and, and adding another layer like a lightning network layer is one way to do that. And so far, it seems to be the best choice for that. And that's why I'm really excited about it. That's why I'm here on stage pumping lightning and, and showing off new products that we're doing with lightning. Um, and it's why BitRefill is getting involved because, you know, we are an e-commerce company in the end. And this is internet money, you know. And so we want to show that, hey, you know, we used to say Bitcoin was cheap and Bitcoin was fast and Bitcoin is anonymous. And we were, we were kind of wrong. Um, but... And, 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 and saying that, yeah, and saying that Bitcoin was peer to peer cash, et cetera. But Lightning actually is peer to peer cash and it's peer to peer to peer to peer. <laughs> you know, it, it's a very uh, complex network, but it strings everything together in a way that you can transact instantly. Merchants can start looking at Bitcoin again. You know, um, the tricky part is, is that onboarding Lightning is not the same experience as onboarding Bitcoin or onboarding venmo or, or paypal um so we're, we're competing with that now if we want to start telling merchants to pay attention again that we can actually provide instant services we're going to have to ha sh start showing them and providing services to facilitate them making it easy and frictionless um and so that's why w yesterday the last the last thing i did here on stage was to uh demo our new uh, lightning service called uh, thor turbo channels and thor turbo channels are basically uh a concept in, Bitcoin, in, in Lightning Network is you have to manage capacity. It isn't just sending Bitcoin to each other. It's that you actually have to have enough room in that channel to send the Bitcoin and to, ra and to route the Bitcoin throughout the network um, to each peer. And, and so we, we're helping to make onboarding easier. By initially, we had Thor. And Thor was just you pay us a small fee and we open a channel to you on, um, from our node with capacity in it so you can receive uh, Bitcoin on this network. Um, so this was made, this made things a little less, uh, have a little less friction for onboarding people onto Lightning. All you had to do was buy a channel from us, install a Lightning wallet on your friend's phone and boom, put them on Lightning. It was a very easy process. But um, what we're trying to show them is that this is instant and this is fast. So we, uh, we became aware of a technology called Turbo Channels and we worked with some developers that, that had invented this technology or come up with the idea to be able to make this, the, the onboarding process instantaneous. So when you buy a turbo channel from us, we basically, you, not only can you choose capacity, but now you can also choose an amount of Bitcoin. So it, it, you're, it used to be when we'd open a channel to you, it was empty, but, but you had now the capability to receive on this network you join the network. But now you can actually push Bitcoin this way. So you come to us, you pay a small fee, you tell us how much Bitcoin you want, and you give us that amount of Bitcoin as well in addition to the fee, and we instantly open a channel to you, and we instantly put Bitcoin in that channel, and that Bitcoin is instantly spendable. Mm -hmm. So now when you onboard your friend, you not only are you 
getting them onto the network, you're instantly getting Bitcoin in their wallet and they're instantly able to use it instantly. <laughs> uh, so, so, the, so the idea, it's pretty crazy. It's something you actually have to try to understand why it's important because you don't think about this stuff before you try to get on Lightning. But then when you do try to get on Lightning and it takes six confirmations for you to even be able to use your channel and there's no Bitcoin in it, you're like, uh, I'm not sure about this. But when you go to a friend and if you, if you do a speed run, like I've, I've been doing test speed runs with how fast I can go from not being on Lightning to, to spending with Lightning. And I can do it in about a minute. Um, <laughs> and so you can literally in one minute, you know, set somebody up to be able to just instantly spend lightning Bitcoin and imagine the difference between the experience of joining Bitcoin going, trying to say, Hey man, my, you're my favorite coffee shop. You should accept Bitcoin. And then they're sitting there waiting for confirmations and people are like, Oh, this is weird. This is awkward. You know? Oh, and look at the fee. The fee is $5. I just bought a $5 coffee and I don't know about this. So to, to, now the experience is okay. Install the app. Okay. You have the app. Boom, 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 boom. One minute. Okay. Now what do you want to buy? And then they buy it and boom, the money's spent and your phone vibrates and all of a sudden it's done. It's, 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 it's an experience to try for sure. Oh, okay. Really interesting. Okay. So a little context for, for these conferences, I never watched the talks live because well, there's a recording, right? Uh, so I always speak to, with the people. So I did not watch your, uh, what you're talking. So I yeah, just, uh, just got my head going. Okay. 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 That's actually really cool. So, okay. So how, how, how would that work? So, um, I, as a, uh, I'm your customer, you're a bit weird, right? Uh, so I send you on chain, um, let's say uh, 100 Satoshis, right? Um, and then you open a channel with me um, and then let's say you open it with 200,000 Satoshis, uh, but you instantly commit to the first push of 100 Satoshis back to me. Um, I'll explain the process okay. specifically. Uh, yeah, I'll explain specific specifically. Um, so... The payment process of buying it from us is technically separate than the process from receiving the channel opening. This is like all our products. You pay us first and then we give you the product. But we do accept zero confirmation Bitcoin transactions. Um, we've accepted them for four years. We've never gotten double spent. Um, this isn't necessarily a challenge, but if you want to try, try and we'll, we'll just make our system more hardy to be able to accept it. Um, maybe zero conf won't be around forever. But while it's possible, we're, we're allowing it to be possible with purchasing us. So technically, the purchase process is, is also instant. Um, there are limitations, et cetera. But in the end, and, we, and you can use any of our payment methods, you know, because we do support some altcoins and things like this. So paying us is one process. And then the second process is once, once we see the payment and acknowledge it, and in the case of, you know, a Bitcoin, it, we will accept zero confirmation. So as soon as we see the confirmation, as soon as we, sorry, as soon as we see the transaction um, on the network and, and that there's a high enough fee that we won't get double spent, et cetera, um, we instantly give you a link to be able to load that into your Lightning wallet. So what happens is, is instantly you pay, instantly you receive the, the information that needs to be loaded into your Lightning wallet to open the channel. Um, and and we, we're currently supporting Bitcoin Lightning Wallet specifically. So as soon as you buy, there's a button that says open in Bitcoin Lightning Wallet. You tap this button and, and it automatically opens Bitcoin Lightning Wallet and it automatically connects to our node and opens the channel. And so who opens the channel? We open the channel to you. So you, the link we give you is the information your wallet needs to know to, to receive the channel, to, to claim the channel. And as soon as you initiate that, we see you and we open a channel to you and we push Bitcoin directly at you. And because we're pushing, the, we, we had to actually customize the, uh, this isn't a core functionality of the, like, the LND protocol or anything like this. We, do ha we had to make some customizations to the way the rules work in Eclair and we had to work directly with the developer of Bitcoin Lightning Wallet, also the person that um, ended up developing out turbo channel technology um and so we work directly with them to customize this relationship to make it possible um you, you won't be able to do this with any wallet but we are adding compatibility for more wallets within the next month or so okay that is that's really cool but um so i i have on my mobile phone the eclair wallet uh, which is an awesome wallet for lightning and what they've integrated with one of the recent updates uh is that uh it's somewhat similar, uh, but 
it, it's initiated from the user side. So the user opens a channel with the on-chain uh, funds and he initially commits uh, to a fee over Lightning. Um, so he pays the, the fee uh, for the inbound liquidity over Lightning with the initial commitment to the push after the trans uh, channel is opened. And then as soon as I think three confirmations are, are in, then uh, Eclair opens another channel to you with the inbound capacity. Uh, so, so in that sense, I, I guess it's somewhat similar, right? But of course, with Eclair, like you, you have two channels afterwards, but it's initiated from the user side. Yeah. Um, there are some differences, I, I think. Um, I, I'm not uh, super familiar with Eclair, um, although we do use the, the Eclair on the, uh, the node side. Um, but I'm not super familiar with what they're supporting and what they're supporting in their mobile wallet. Um, I haven't used it in a while. But um, the, the difference here is that there's no confirmations concept here. Um, the only confirm actually there is, is one. The, the one concept here is when you buy the amount of Bitcoin, say you buy 500,000 500, Satoshis to be in your channel, um, you ha we push you that amount of Bitcoin and we push you double that amount of capacity. Um, but you can't receive until the channel confirms. Mm -hmm. You can only spend, and you can only spend because of your special relationship with us. Um, so you can still close the channel, you can still spend the Bitcoin that we push to you, but you can't receive until the channel confirms because the, the, the network hasn't confirmed your channel yet, so only we have. Um, and so because we have a direct relationship, we're able to instantly push back, you know, push to you and you can push back through us, but we can't push into your channel yet from other people. Um, we can only do it from ourselves. But once it confirms, it's a normal channel. Um, whereas in the case of Eclair, it sounds like you still have to wait for the normal confirmations of like any Lightning channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like your approach very much. Uh, because as you said, it can be instant, especially for sending. Right? Because with Lightning Network, when you're sending someone, then it's, yeah, then it's impossible to, uh, for you to be malicious, right? Uh, because all the pre... or. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because when you're sending, you cannot close the channel at a at a old state, which is of your benefit, um, and that's the contrary with receiving. Right? With receiving, you actually have to be vigilant uh, because your your counterparty could cheat on you. Um, so that's, I, I guess, also one thing why you allow uh, sending instantly uh, because the user cannot cheat you. Um, right. right. There's there's a there's a few uh, game theory principles at play here that that make this actually work. It's not like it's trustless, but it's not trustless. It's trustless because the, the actual incentive structure works. It's, but there actually are ways that you could mess with this relationship. Um, it's just that you would have no incentive to do so. For example, um, you already paid us, right? And whether we accept the risk of zero conf is a separate concern of ours. It's our risk. Um, but assuming there is no risk there, the, you already paid us. So we already know we're getting the amount of Bitcoin that your channel is worth. So pushing Bitcoin to you is not a risk to us because we're already going to get paid. And so that, we, that risk is removed. It has nothing to do with the Lightning Network, but we remove that risk through the Bitcoin Network. Um, but now you have a risk that we might not let you to push that, that Bitcoin to spend because you're, we're the connection that makes that possible. You have to trust us that to pass your transaction when you go to spend it. We may not pass it, but we have no incentive to do that because if we don't do that, you'll just close the channel. And, when, and then when the channel confirms, you'll get all the Bitcoin in the channel. So you, you have no, even though we could, there's a possibility for disruption, nobody has any incentive to, have to act disruptively because in the end, you already paid us and you can take the Bitcoin from us just by closing the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good points. Uh, and also, I like that it's only one channel uh, because with the Eclair setup, first the user opens the channel, then after confirmation, Eclair opens the channel back. Uh, and then you have two channels, which, I mean, because they're the same nodes, it kind of is, is at least on node level, somewhat similar as if it would be one channel. But in the details, especially with routing and, and with channel liquidity management, it's rather a pain in the ass. And so with, uh, with what was it, what's it called again? The turbo, turbo, channels. turbo channels. You instantly have a perfectly balanced channel, right? User buys 500 liquidity, you open a channel of one, uh, 1 million uh, Satoshis and you push the initial 500. Uh, so instantly you're perfectly balanced. And yeah, so that is still. Check, uh, check out the demo from yesterday because basically what it, what, what it shows is it goes from me having a lightning wallet with zero off-chain funds 
Um, and, and then I go through the process of buying the channel and everything. And I, I tip a uh, hodl knot, the guy that did a lightning network torch. I, I, I go from having not being on lightning at all to tipping him. You know, I, I didn't do a speed run, but it took me maybe on camera. It took me maybe about 90 seconds to two minutes. Cause I was, I was narrating a little bit, but, um, if I wasn't talking and just trying to do it as fast as possible, you can, in under a minute, you can basically go from not being on lightning to tipping somebody. So it's pretty cool. And I, I think what, what I'm interested to see is with this instantaneousness of lightning in general, and maybe also with, with turbo, whether or not this, this opens up new ways that people are using this, you know, just because of the instant capability. Um, you know, I'm interested to see how, if people find other ways to leverage this because they have before, you know, like when we did, when we came out with Thor in the first place, we didn't think about the lightning torch, you know what I mean? And the lightning torch, while it might not be a normal economic behavior, um, it happened and it was a phenomenon and, and it was spontaneous and people actually needed Thor to make that happen. People, and, and it was an, I thought the, the cool thing with lightning torch was, it was a great onboarding tool for the community. It was like, oh, I want to participate. Everybody likes to, to be a part of something. And, but as soon as they try to partic participate, they had to start learning about how lightning works. And, and then it was like, all right, this is even better. This is like ed people are being forced to understand how this actually works, and they're going to end up actually using it. Um, and, then they, and then what they learned was, okay, I need capacity. Where the hell do I get capacity? Oh, you can buy capacity. Great. Um, and so we, we, were really, we thought it was really cool to be able to help people with that experiment. Yeah, awesome. And again, because uh, BitRefill is really well connected, it's the perfect note to do that, right? Because you, you, I guess once you have done the Turbo channel, you're instantly well balanced and you can pretty much send to almost the entire network within a couple hops and seeing you can receive from almost the entire network with a couple hops. Uh, so that is awesome with just one channel. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. And it's instant. Um, so maybe, maybe one thing, like especially because, so not only do you have your revenue in Bitcoin, but your expenditures in fiat, right? Now you have some of your revenue in Lightning, right? Uh, but I guess the exchanges, when you buy your Bitcoin, you have to do that on-chain. So then the thing is that users push a lot of liquidity to your Lightning node, um, and then somehow you have to get it out of there, right? Uh, so how did you experience the, the liquidity side, especially because you don't really have any expenditures uh, in Lightning? So th this isn't a real issue yet. It will become an issue. Um, it's not a major issue yet because, first of all, the Lightning Network is not amazingly large. We, we're, we're doing more Lightning traffic and certainly more economic traffic than anybody else on Lightning. But um, in the end, we've committed, we, we hold as much Bitcoin as, as we can, as I told you. So since we have Bitcoin on hand, it's not a major pain for us to stake this Bitcoin into this network and, and help facilitate this arm of the company. So in general, we don't mind having stuff stuck in Lightning for now. Eventually, our liquidity might not be so uh, forgiving, and we may need to constantly manage the amount of Bitcoin we have on the network because we, have, we may have too much Bitcoin stuck in, in the Lightning network. If that, when that becomes the case, um, we'll start to have to get getting more specialized and good at using all of the new features they're adding for managing liquidity. You know, we're having submarine swaps or having uh, multi-path payments. And there's all kinds of ways that you're going to be able to manage the routing of your coins, the rebalancing of your coins. Um, and because we're a company, because we're a centralized entity, and because this still allows you to be centralized but trustless, um, we have some special opportunities to be able to manage things, not just for ourselves, but for other people. Um, and so I really am interested to see what kind of services we can keep adding. We, we plan to continue to add more and more services for Lightning. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I think that it'll be really cool. I think that, you know, figuring out algorithmic ways to automatically manage the liquidity of all of our channels, figuring out how to uh, be efficient because we're already accepting Bitcoin transactions on the main chain anyway in, in, as a payment method. So are we going to start multi-purposing our Bitcoin transactions to be able to rebalance our Lightning Network activity? And, and, and the technologies are all coming through pre pretty quickly. So we're, we're going to be able to constantly be specialists in managing liquidity and, and managing the efficiency of uh, uh, how we use block space. 
especially and for, for example so what you could do i guess uh, is that when your customers uh, buy something from you on chain uh, then and you provide them of course with an address uh, then this could not just be a your cold wallet or, or your hot wallet single signature but it actually might be a lightning network opening script right uh, so the address you you give the user themselves that would directly open a channel on your side so like for example like stuff like that or, or just other uh, cool things of interoperating both on chain and off chain funds with something like splicing and all the other cool things coming like loop and, and all that uh, is is really great um so so yeah there I, I guess we've talked about quite a lot so maybe a bit about the the future products like what what else are you tinkering on uh, both for bit refill as well as with the lightning side um, with BitRefill, basically what we're we're trying to figure out how to tackle, you know, adding the right products for the right markets. Um, that's just mostly a broad comment, you know, in, in that sense. Uh, we do have some ideas, and I don't know if I can really share them yet, but we do have some ideas to provide things that aren't necessarily uh, specifically gift cards, other things that we can deliver digitally, um, other things that we can deliver in general that, that to make living on crypto possible. Um, I'm, no, we, well, I, I mean, I personally have some interest in, in digital products. Um, I'm a big Dota 2 fan. So uh, I, I would like to see uh, gamers get more into this world. Um, for some reason, there seems to be a lack of synergy. I just don't understand where gamers aren't really a big part of Bitcoin. Um, there are plenty of Bitcoiners that game, but the actual gaming like demographic they seem somewhat disinterested, and I don't understand why. Hopefully, that we can find ways to address that. But um, it's it's not uh, on the roadmap in that sense. Um, but we are always looking for ways to add additional products and kind of branch out from where we are with gift cards and, and finding other similar things we can do well to get, provide more utility for your Bitcoin. Um, we have services that we plan on adding into the platform. Like I mentioned, we will add a rewards program. We will add a referral program. Um, we have uh, a lot that we're trying to do. I wish I could say more. We, uh, we definitely have a lot planned. Um, I, there are just some things that I, I probably shouldn't reveal yet. Um, but we, we do have uh, new products. We do have new features in the platform that are planned. And you will see a lot coming out of us in, in the coming year. Um, on the Lightning side, same thing. Um, our goal, it will be tough, but our goal is actually to make an attempt to come out with a new service like Turbo every month. Um, if not specifically a new service, some kind of new compatibility. For example, within the next month, we will have Turbo running on another wallet. Um, and so and we want to have more wallets. We want to work with more Lightning developers to make more things possible. Um, we're looking for people to be reckless with, basically. <laughs> um, uh, what we'll add for the next Lightning product, I'm not sure. Um, we, we, ha we know some things we are most interested in, but um, I think that we're also trying to make sure we zoom far enough out about the future that we're choosing the right things and not just adding things. Um, so we're, we're, we're being very strategic about it. Um, for now, you know, we're, we're, we're just finding ways to reduce friction. Um, but there are, there are a lot of opportunities to provide services for the Lightning Network and, and managing things for people and making it easier. So um, keep watching us because we're not stopping. <laughs> well, uh, that's good. The, the recklessness the will still continue. Uh, but I think we're, we're almost out of the reckless phase, at least when we have channel backups. Uh, I think then some, some of we can say, okay, it's still, like, still uh, risky, but no longer that reckless. Um, but yeah, uh, John, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, that was uh, Pierre talk uh, about BitRefill. And Piers, if you, first and foremost, if you want to set up your Lightning node, if you want to have a well-connected peer, I can only recommend the BitRefill node because it really is one of the best uh, nodes to, to connect to. And again, most of my liquidity gets routed through BitRefill because it's just the shortest path most of the time. Uh, so very much I can recommend that. Test out the new Turbo uh, Lightning Channel openings. Uh, that sounds awesome. Uh, and again, Thor or now Turbo is a great way of you receiving uh, Bitcoin in Lightning Network. Um, of course, for a small fee here for, for the service provided, uh, but definitely a rather easy way uh, of managing your channels and getting the inbound liquidity. And then, of course, what we all want to do is spend our Bitcoin, especially when we no, hold, no longer hold fiat shit coins, right? Then we have to spend Bitcoin. Uh, and you can do that again on bid refill with Lightning. Uh, and that is awesome because here you can actually get a bunch of different goods and services uh, from all different types of platforms. Uh, so pretty much with BitRefill, anything that you want to buy, especially online, you can get it. 
Uh, so the opportunity of closing the loop, of fully entering the second realm of Bitcoin uh, is here uh, and, and you can do it. So uh, be reckless. Uh, it's still called that. So uh, do it. Uh, and yeah, um, enjoy Bitcoin. Enjoy Lightning. Uh, so any last words to the peers? Sure. I, I just want to thank you for having me. I, I love talking Bitcoin and love, you know, uh, shilling BitRefill, <laughs> um, you know, but we try to make sure that we're not shilling scams. You know, we, we are trying to provide actual utility to people. Um, if anybody out there is in the lightning world and wants to be reckless with me, get in touch. If anybody using our products or using our platform has feedback or requests, please get in touch with me. Um, we definitely listen. Um, we can't do everything and we certainly can't do everything right away, but everything that, that seems like it should be done gets put in the queue and, and it will get done eventually. So we, we want your feedback. We want to make sure we're giving you the, the products and services that you need and make Bitcoin easy to use. Um, we're just here to help Bitcoin and, and, and get paid while doing it and, and make the world a better place, I guess, to, to sound cheesy. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, we're making the world a better place by spending one Satoshi at a time with ridiculously low fees. So, <laughs> Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here again today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.